It might look like we're inside a spaceship, but this is actually a farm. The crops here are grown mostly by machines, with the help of just a few humans, like this woman. Her life offers an early peek at a new kind of farming. It's a promising twist to an ancient career, but only if the robots don't replace her altogether. As technology replaces old jobs, it's also creating new ones. I'm Aki Ito, and I'm here to show you the jobs of the future. My name is Katie Morich, and I'm a vertical farmer. Katie works for a three-year-old startup called Bowery. Its farm is here, in this industrial park in New Jersey. It's the last place you'd expect to find any sign of life. We take extra precaution to make sure we're not bringing any contaminants into the farm, so we're gonna wear hair nets, and then this is just gonna cover all your street clothes. Katie wears a clean uniform every day. Visitors like me are handed a non-negotiable jumpsuit. Step inside, and you'll see a cross between a factory and a lab. Trays of produce are vertically stacked to save space, and each of them is given just the right amount of light, water, and nutrients at the optimal temperature and humidity. It's an incredible level of precision, which is why Katie can grow more faster with less water and no pesticides. It's also what lets her grow things that taste like nothing you've ever had before. What's this? This or is this? the sorrel. Mm. That tastes like candy apple. Whoa! It's so sour. I know. The majority of this facility is automated. The data is collected by sensors, and a computer controls growing conditions for the crops. For the things that the machines can't do yet, Katie and her fellow human farmers fill in. And even those tasks are dictated by the software that runs this whole operation. It lets me know what I have to do, what time I should be doing it by, and that's how I get my day done. Do you ever like rebel against the computer's orders? Um, once in a while, if we're trying to do a little experiment of our own, we'd be like, OK, is this system telling us the correct thing? Most of the time, it is. All the time, it's right. <laughs> After a full day at the farm, Katie likes to bring home samples to her husband, Jace, and her cat, Burton. Salt, pepper, a little more. garlic. On the menu are two items from Katie's farm. Basil for pesto pasta. Mm, that's so good. And mixed greens for a salad. I'm terrified. Everyone's judging. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Mm, cheers. Katie fell in love with environmental science in college. But after graduating, she struggled to find a full-time career in the field. Jace had to deal with me a lot. <laughs> you know, coming home to me crying and trying to figure out if I'm making the right decisions. And then somehow online, Bowery popped up. She told me about this job, like Bowery farming. It's like an indoor vertical farm and I was like, all right, this sounds like total BS. <laughs> so I took my work truck and I, I said, you know what, let me swing around and see what this is all about. So I drove up to it. Doesn't look like there's a farm in there at all. So like I called her and I was like, listen, I know like you're psyched about this job, but it seems super sketchy. But I figured I'd go and check it out for myself. And I pulled up and it was exactly as how he described, but I gave it a shot. And so in 2017, Katie joined Bowery. She became employee number nine. This is really my first real full-time big girl job. 
and it was a little intimidating at first coming into this company with people that have like their PhD and I don't necessarily have that background. So I constantly doubted myself when I first started at Bowery. I wasn't worried about her at all, you know. She said to us, can I do this? And I used to tell her to have a little faith in herself. Katie grew up in a typical New Jersey suburb with two working parents. They've tried to stay away from putting too much pressure on their only child. When we heard about what she was doing and realized that this is something that didn't exist when we were younger, and I thought back from my generation, you know, PCs came out when I started working. And my parents probably would have said I was crazy if I went into an IT field at the time, but now look what happened. So it's not a good idea for us to try to tell her what to do because it's a different world. Bowery is backed by some of Silicon Valley's top investors. And with almost $30 million of funding, the startup is expanding fast. And in May, after all that time she spent doubting herself, Katie got promoted to lead a team of her own farmers. The produce she grows supplies a few nearby grocery stores, as well as this restaurant in Manhattan. It's less than 10 miles away from the Bowery Farm. What do you think? That's delicious. <laughs> You made that. It's like crazy to see stuff I grew on a plate. All right, let me get some. But for Katie, it's not just about making premium vegetables for people who can afford them. I want people to have the purest produce imaginable, and I want that to be readily available to anybody. The world's population is set to reach 9.8 billion people by 2050. Two-thirds will live in cities. And we're going to need all kinds of new technology to sustainably feed everyone. The key to making that food affordable is to continue to make more with fewer farmers. But no matter how high-tech all this gets, Katie thinks there will still be a place for her. I just think there's something about the human mind that you can't really replicate. So I think we can still work closely with technology, but I still think it's nice, you know, to have a human there. It's also be pretty lonely for the robots if they don't have anybody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs>